talk tonight in some measure about the New South challenges, the challenges of your generation. We have learned to survive apart. Now we must unlearn some bad lessons learned well and go beyond surviving apart, learning how to live together. Learning how to live together and not just survive apart. And then the relevant questions of your, of your life. We look at the debates tonight, last night, there's more and more discussion about less and less. Issues have little value to you as they try to become theologians and discuss matters of faith. We live in our faith. That by faith may be, we live under the law. People of faith must fight for just law. We had faith during slavery time. Until the 13th Amendment passed, we were not free. We had faith on the back of the bus. Until the law changed, we could not sit where we chose to sit. We had faith in settlement. Until the law changed, we could not all vote. So people of faith must fight for just ones and fight for sound economics and address the relevant issues of, of your day in this New South. There was a South that required a Montgomery bus boycott. Now that South is behind us. There was a South that required a confrontation in Central High Little Rock, Arkansas. That South is behind us. And now that we are able to pull the school together and share the materials and become classmates, what are the challenges of your day? Tonight here in Arkansas, there are 600,000 people living on the poverty line. 600,000. 200,000 children living on the poverty line. People in the Delta of Arkansas and Mississippi, some of the richest soil on earth, are starving. How can you be living in such rich soil? And such poor people arguing about women's private health issues someplace in Virginia as a national policy. 400,000 in this state are uninsured. 53,000 children are uninsured. Arkansas, the third highest child poverty rate in the U.S., behind Mississippi, the District of Columbia. The issue of your time has to deal with how to revive a war on poverty. The reason why well, it's considered the reason of the red states were quote the vote for rich people. Think about it. Uh, Alabama, 34% of the state budget is federal government. Arkansas, 35% of your state budget is federal. Florida, 35%. Georgia, 35%. Kentucky, 40%. Louisiana, 51%. Mississippi, 47%. How can states in those condition be fighting against federal investment? roads and schools and bridges and hospitals. Rich people, poor soil, rich soil, poor people in this region. Today, as we look across the landscape of our country, there's too much concentrated wealth. Too few people have too much. If in the flow of your human body, if there's too much concentrated blood uh, and it does not flow, then you have a stroke. You cannot survive. Blood must flow. There must be some reasonable distribution of wealth and resources. Why does so few have so much? Is it because they're working harder or smarter? It may be because the cards are stacked. Too few people have too much concentrated wealth. The banks drove us to the brink of disaster. We bailed out the banks with zero interest money. In a two page proposal, we bailed out the banks. Not link the lending of the reinvestment, so we're losing homes to foreclosure, trips to foreclosure. Banks got bailed out, people got locked down. Why do they have so much? The insurance companies, we bailed them out. And so, because the debt, that's not a cap, they maintain the insurance monopolies. The result is the insurance rates have gone up, the number of insured has gone up. Too few have too much. We gave uh, to the richest 1% a, uh, a, a tax cut. 
Maar de boel moet nog anders tegen wat je denkt is gemaakt. Why are we giving so much to those who think of the ship, not enough to those in the hull? The fact is, Titanic did not sink because the chairs were off the deck. Water came up to the bottom. Too few with too much subsidized by the government. Too many unnecessary wars. Went into Iraq, hit the wrong target. Iraq is not hit us not enough. We hit Iraq. 6,000 American soldiers killed, 6,000 killed, 50,000 injured, maybe 100,000 Iraqis killed. Rome talked, we wouldn't even apologize. No humility. Uh, we, this week we burned accidentally the Holy Quran in Afghanistan. And President Barack Obama quickly apologized, which we did not mean to burn the Holy Book. No Gingra said we should have apologized. But what does one get the graciousness of our faith? One is too arrogant to apologize. Humility, to be humble to heal the kingdom, not to be arrogant. Arrogance precedes the fall. And so we are too arrogant of too many wars. Three trillion dollars in Iraq. One trillion of that can wipe out every state budget deficit. Can we hire all police, teachers, Firemen and build our schools. Too much on this. So we wouldn't live here and destroy the government to a spread democracy. But we go silent on Syria. People are being killed by the schools every day. We went to the war in the Strait of Hormuz and the tension around Iran. That's not resolved. We're looking at six dollars for a gallon of gas, maybe even ten dollars for a gallon of gas. The big issues of our time. Too much war. Too much poverty. Most poor people are not on welfare. They work every day. They drive cabs. They're their laborers. They work in the fields. They raise other people's children. They work in fast food restaurants. Most poor people are not on welfare. They work every day. They are the working poor. And most poor people are not black. They're white. They're female. They're young. But with a white, black, and brown, hunger hurts. It was all care for all of God's children. Tonight, the nation is so abundant and so wealthy. 53 million Americans, 53 million are food insecure. 50 million Americans tonight are in poverty. They cannot make ends meet. Because they're poor, they cannot get money in the front of a bank. They can't get a 4% loan. They sit in the back to go into the, the loan shops. They pay 18%. Too poor to get 4%. They're rich enough to get 18% loans. Driven into unscrupulous users, destroying them and their family lives. Too much concentrated wealth. Too much fear. Too many wars. Too much poverty. And too many fall the trade policies. All Chinese, Chinese labor is not better labor. It's just cheaper labor. We globalize capital. We've not globalized human rights and workers' rights, women's rights, children's rights, environmental security. And yet your burden today in this new South is to learn to live together and fight those fights together. When Arkansas plays Alabama in the big football game, and you can choose uniform color over skin color. You can choose direction over complexion. What makes the glorious day when the Razorbacks went to Crimson Tide? And, you, and everybody's high on the game. When the game is anticipated, your team will win. But your team will lose no wins. It's over this year, can't they walk away? See you next year. What allows us, when Arkansas plays Alabama in the big game, or other issues the case may be, the game is over to walk away with a sense of truth because the winner wins with some degree of, of, of grace. Loser maintains a sense of ignorance. Say whenever, repeat whenever, the playing field is even, the rules the rules, the public, the goals are clear, the referee is fair, the score is transparent, we can live with the outcome. The playing field must be even, and access, education, health care and jobs and houses, not just 
football fields, basketball clubs.